morning friends today we are going to talk about the knee joint knee joint is one of the most complex joint of the body made by femur tibia and fibula in certain part and a patellar bone so we will in this particular module we will talk about the bones which take part here the passive tissues that is ligaments menisci bursae etc then the muscles arrangement and the movements in this particular topic is very important for exam purpose also so you can follow it through it and by taking help of your books also so knee joint overview first of all the what are the bones which form it? they are femur patella and tibia fibula is just taking part in the help it is accessory type of bone which is not taking directly part into the knee joint remember it then what is the type of joint it is synovial joint but it is covered by the synovial membrane and have synovial fluid it's synovial joint so it is a highly movable type of joint what type of movements which are going to occur here is because it is a primary primary hinge joint the hinge joint have only 2d motions only like flexion and extensions then in this diagrammatic representation you can see first of all in anterior view this green color bone is femur also called as thigh bone then there is patella which is a type of sesamoid bone this large sesamoid bone formed at the junction of quadricep tendon remember the name quadricep tendon and patella ligament in addition to undergoing a gliding motion across the femur the patella provides additional leverage for the knee extensors also then there is tibia you can see this is tibia directly taking part in the knee joint you can see fibula is just attached to the lateral side of tibia and it is just helping it the joint but not taking directly part remember bony landmarks you can see these are certain bony landmarks and this is how you can remember this all these structures medial supracondylar ridge medial epicondyle medial condyle these are the part of femur then inferior bone pes and cervicals this is the arrangement of three muscle which are in the uh, arrangement like foot of a hand there are three muscles we'll talk about them later tibial tuberosity then you can see here anterior border of tibia gradish tubercle head of fibula intercondylar eminence lateral condyle superior bone lateral epicondyle and lateral supracondylar ridge these are certain things which you are going to see and find it here in the posterior view if you want to see on the back side again you can see femur okay, there is femur the green color bone this one now patella is not visible tibia is visible you can see this is tibia and fibula you can see this is fibula then bony landmarks and then you can see certain labeling which we have seen already in that particular slide only so next we are going to the passive tissues there are four type of tissues beside bone and muscles that are passively responsible for the structure stability and mechanism of knee joint these are ligaments menisci a special type of arrangement for the more stability of the joint then bursas then joint capsule so one by one we have to follow it so first of all the ligaments so due to complex dynamics of the knee joint there are numerous key ligaments in the knee joint first one is cruciate ligament cruciate will cross like which is just like this cruciate ligament is like you can see here in the posterior view you can see then collateral ligaments these are the collateral ligament of the both the side medial and fibular or medial and lateral you can see then other key ligaments are these are the other key ligaments which we are going to find in that particular right so one by one we will discuss the so first of all cruciate ligaments these are two in number as i told you anterior cruciate ligament called as acl and posterior cruciate ligament called as pcl they join the tibia and femur together forming a x shape that point tighter in the medial rotation and loose in the lateral rotation of tibia this is the acl you can see this is the acl runs from anterior intercondylar surface of tibia to the posterior medial surface of lateral femoral condyle it restricts the anterior translation of the tibia and hyperextension of the knee 
it is a weaker and more often injured than the PCL. Remember, it is one which is more often injured, especially during the sports injury. Next is posterior one. It runs from the posterior intercondylar space of tibia to the anterolateral surface of medial femoral condyle. Now you can remember the name anterior and posterior is coming from the its attachment to the intercondylar surface of tibia. Remember, it restricts the posterior translation of tibia and keeps the tibia pulled against the femur during the knee flexor. So how can you remember very simply? Middle finger here represents the ACL. The pointer finger represents the PCL. So hold your hand next to knee and cross your fingers across your finger. Then you can simply remember it. Otherwise, what I have told you, you have to remember from where they are extending one. Next one is collateral. These are two collateral here, medial or tibial collateral, MCL, and the lateral or fibular collateral. These become taut when the knee is extended, restricting rotation of the joint. Conversely, as the knee is flexed, then slackens to allow more rotation to the upper through the joint. So MCL, that is medial collateral ligament. You can see it is present on the medial side. Technically, a thickening of the joint capsule, typically considered to be its own ligament, extending from the medial epicondyle of femur to the superior portion of medial tibia directly resist inward medial collapse of the knee joint near its midpoint mcl is firmly attached to the medial meniscus and talk about the lateral one it is thick pot like ligament it runs from the lateral epicondyle of femur to the lateral surface of fibular head directly opposes the outward lateral collapsing of the knee popliteal tendon passes t to lcl dividing the bicep femoris into the Two courses. So these are some major important points related to collateral ligaments. And coming to certain other ligaments, first of them is patellar ligament. It connects the apex of patella to the tibial tuberosity. Direct force from the quadriceps muscles to cause the knee extension. Oblique popliteal. You can see it is oblique in shape. It is a reflection from insertion of semi membranous one of the muscle of the hamstrings. Arises inferior to the medial condyle of tibia, inserts superiorly onto the posterior portion of the lateral femoral condyle. Then there is one more arcuate. You can see this two yellow one on the lateral side only. It begins on the posterior aspect of fibular head, wraps over time of the popliteal muscle to join the oblique ligament. So these were the certain ligaments which were important. Next, very important structure is the menisci. So, what is menisci? Menisci is the superintendent, same as the labrum ring, which was present in the shoulder joint. These are two fibrocartilage pillows sitting on the articular surface of tibia, which absorb the saw and stabilizes the knee. They are roughly C shaped, thicker on the outer side than inner side, allowing them to cup the femoral condyles. Lateral menisci, you can see this green one begins and ends at the lateral base of the intertrochanteric eminence, is smaller, more circular, and thicker of the two menisci, more mobile than its medial counterpart. So remember, L for locomotion. So, where is locomotion move? In the lateral meniscus only, which is more mobile. Medial one, the purple one, you can see this is medial one. Runs from the medial base of intertrochanteric eminence to the anterior intercondylar area, larger, thinner, and more open, less mobile as it adheres somewhat to the MCL. So, this was we have already talked in medial collateral ligament, also it was having the adherence. So there is a specific clinical point known as unhappy triad. It is named of for the severe acute injury of ACL, MCL, and medial meniscus. ACL means anterior cruciate ligament, MCL means medial collateral ligament, MM means the meniscus, medial meniscus. Why this is particular? Due to their similar fiber direction, these are three all strained at the same type of movement and therefore at higher risk of being injured simultaneously. Excessive vulgus force of the knee, particularly in combination with external tibia rotation, 
highest risk of occurring when the foot is planted and leg is loaded. This member unhappy tried ACL and CL medial meniscus. Next, we have to talk about the bursas. Surrounding the patella and the anterior portion of knee joint, there are some pockets, sac like pocket filled with soluble fluid just to reduce the friction between the different part of this highly movable joint. You can see suprapatellar bursa. Suprapatellar bursa, an extension of joint capsule and attachment site on the articular genu muscle. This muscle keeps the suprapatellar bursa from falling into the joint space and pulls it superiorly during the knee extension. Next one is subcutaneous patellar bursa. This one green one. Then deep infra patellar bursa. Perfect one. And then subcutaneous infrapatellar bursa. This is lower to patellar. That's why name is infrapatellar. Now coming to the joint capsule. This structure can be thought as a two-layered sac filled with synovial fluid that enhances the entire joint, covering all the areas inside which aren't already layered in the particular cartilage. This is the synovial membrane, the blue one. The fibrous layer you can see, it is the outermost layer and closes the posterior and lateral portion of knee joint, thickens medially to form MCL, continues with patellar and ligamental and then there is synovial layer which is innermost, lies fibrous layers both medially and laterally, anterior and posterior respect reflect to the line, the cruciate ligament, sealing them out of the synovial space. So these are the points related with joint capsule. Next, we have to just review something for the, especially for the movement of knee and their associated muscles. There is posterior leg. This component can be split into the two layers of the muscle, superficial and deep. There is plantaris muscle, soleus muscle, gastronomius having two heads, lateral head and medial head. This is how the superficial layer of posterior leg is going to be formed. Then there is deep layer having popliteus, tbl is posterior, flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitorum longus. So these are the some muscles which are present on the leg region. Then you can see the anterior thigh. It will be divided in three parts: superficial, intermediate, and deep. The superficial is made up of rectus femoris and sartorius. Sartorius is also called as talar muscle, which is the longest muscle of the body. Then in the intermediate there is vestus lateralis, vestus intermedialis, and vestus medialis. Then in the deeper one you can see only one articular genu, a small one, which is present at the level of genu or knee joint. Then in posterior side, there are two again divided to two components, superficial compartment having bicep femoris long head and semitendinosus. In the deeper compartment, there are bicep femoris short head and semimembranous. This particular group of posterior thigh is actually called as hamstring muscles. Now coming to the main topic that is basic knee movements. So one by one, we have to talk about flexion, extension, internal rotation, and External rotation. Basically, because we have seen this is the type of knee joint, so basically there will be two muscles, flexor and extension, but there are certain two again more that is rotations are also going to be happen. So flexion, if you see how the flexion of knee joint is bringing your heel towards the back of your thigh, like this. This is flexion. Again, you can see this is flexion. The muscles which are involved will be bicep femoris, then semimembranosus, then semitendinosus, and gastrocnemius. These will be the primary movers. The secondary movers will be the popliteus, gracialis, and sartorius. Next, the extension of knee will be the act of straightening your knee, such as during the action of standing up or sitting posture or kicking someone. When you kick your football, then you are doing actually the knee extension. You can see here, like this. Yeah, 
bringing your flex legs again in the straight position so the muscles which are involved here are again in two vastus lateralis you see vastus lateralis vastus medialis vastus intermedialis and rectus femoris it means all of the anterior thigh muscles will be the prime movers and again a smaller one that is articular genu it will be the accessory muscle for the extension now coming for the inter, uh, knee rotation the tibia can be rotated anteriorly or femur externally if limb is loaded by gracilis so semi tendinosus and semi membranosus are also going to be contributing to this movement when the knee is flexed now how it is going to happen like this if you see the motion will be like this on the internal side it is a medial side the muscles which are involved will be gracilis semi membranosus semi tendinosus and popliteus these are the muscles which will be helping in the internal knee rotation now for the external knee rotation the tibia can be rotated externally by bicep femoris along this motion again you can see this this one is the external rotation the only muscle in body bicep femoris this one is bicep femoris so little bit about the biomechanics of this particular joint to appreciate the structure and function of knee joint it is necessary to understand that basic flexion and extension movement involved by smaller complicated movement called roll and glide despite the intricate ligaments surrounding the knee joint a small amount of rotation around vertical axis is still allowed all these movements can either occur independently or simultaneously with each other So let's see what is roll and glide. If the knee joint was extended hinge like an elbow, the femur would roll right of the tibia whenever we squat down, like this. You can see, like this, without ligaments. If there were no ligaments present, therefore femur has to roll backward on the tibia while sliding anteriorly to keep the weight of body pressing straight down through the joint. Now what will happen? Now it will be something like this. It will be fixed. See, like this, it is confirmed. So what are the structures which allow this complex movement? Is ACL and PCL, which were used already told to you. So this biomechanics part is little tough for a uh, UG purpose. So you just remember the names. That's all for this particular part. Then the rotational movements. due to the fact that knee is not locked into the true hinge structure like elbow there is vertical axis also occurs the movement is occur the cruciate ligaments and collateral ligaments the cruciate ligament bind tightly to the medial rotation restrict to the knee to the 10 degree of internal rotation allow up to the 60 degree of external rotation collateral ligament during full extension pull tightly to prevent any rotation around the vertical axis do not to strongly influence rotation during the flexion so these are the rotational movements in the vertical axis also now there is one more movement screw home mechanism of knee the screw home mechanism describes the way in which knee joint locks into the place when entering the full extension this happens when the knee is both loaded and unloaded so when the knee is loaded or bed weight then what will happen like this a closed chain so this particular action is also called locking of knee a locking occurs due to the small degree of rotation of femur during the last 20 to 30 second of knee extension like when we are going to squat or sit like palki marki jab we are going to sit it is going to happen like this this again you can see this is locking movement so when leg is unloaded or not weight bearing then what will happen you can see this is again it is this part open chain part the locking occurs due to the smaller degree of rotation of tibia during the last 20 degree of knee in the seated knee extension when you are seated and doing extension this particular type of locking is going to occur in the unloaded type of conditions now loaded knee when the leg is planted on the ground and bearing weight that is while squatting the leg and foot are laterally fixed in place this called close kinetic chain 
which bone rotates to create the screw bone muscle? Yes, it is. E1. And how many degrees of rotation is going to occur? Between 3 to 5 degrees of rotation. Next one, knocking off unloaded knee when the leg is not wearing anywhere. Example, when you are sitting or swinging your legs, this is open kinetic chain. So which bone is going to help? Now, this lower part, that is tibia, is going to help in the locking. And how many degrees will be? Again, the degree will be same, 3 to 5. Next, what is unlocking? So regardless of whether or not the limb is loaded, the popliteal muscle is called unlocking joint. So loaded leg, it will be like this. Unlocking will be like this. The popliteal rotates the femur externally to allow the typical rotation and translation of knee. So if it is unloaded, again the popliteus is only going to help. You see again, like this. Unlocking is going to internally allow the typical rotation and translation of knee joint. So what is bio, uh, the biomechanics? So there is contribution from passive tissues, ACL, which is tightens the end extension, lateral femoral condyle, rows further around along the tibial plateau, then medial femoral condyle. Medial tibial condyle is more concave, reducing the distance that medial femoral condyle receives during the flexion and contribution from active tissues. We have seen popliteal, which me means medially rotates the tibia to initiate the knee joint. So this all thing what we have done in short lecture is related to the knee joint, especially about the biomechanics, that soft tissues, that is our structures, the ligaments, the menisci, and little bit about the, the clinical points also. Basically all the muscles also we have to study, which will be dealt in the separate lecture. Thank you.